Okay, hey there again. Uh, so welcome back. So in this short video, I'm gonna be showing you how to uh, do some autocorrelation tests in eViews. Uh, first off, I'm gonna show you how to interpret the Durbin-Watson statistic that is always sort of included in the regression output. Durbin-Watson statistic, of course, is for uh, first order autocorrelation test. Uh, and I'm also gonna show you how to run a Lagrange multiplier test, again, in eViews for second and higher order autocorrelation. Now, if you think like, why would I do this, right? There's a whole, so I have a whole playlist, right, on basic econometrics of which this video is part of. Um, if you want sort of all the theory of what, you know, why we're doing this and when it would occur, uh, the video on serial correlation uh, is the one you want. Okay. So this is just, we're viewing a recording. I've, I've made a simple little, um, well, if you, using a simple little canned data set here where we've got uh, add expenditures and then sales. So add is add expenditures and sales is observed sales. And so it's time series data. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run uh, the little regression. And so you see it's add and regressing add against sales. Uh, this is my regression output then. And we notice our durbin Watt statistic there in the lower right hand side. I'm going to pause this. What we do then is we, you know, we take that, that test statistic and we apply it to a Durbin-Watson table, which I've just grabbed one here, um, realstatistics.com. So this is not my table, right? So guys, if you're upset about me using this table, so let me know and I'll figure something out. All right, so K is the number of variables, which of course in this case is one, and then our number of observations. Uh, so, so you see that's our lower and, and higher version of our value there. I'm gonna move myself over here while that's going, okay. So in this case, we have 26 observations, right? And we have one variable, so we go down to 26 and one. Uh, we got our lower value of 1.07 and our upper value of 1.22. Our Durbin-Watson is 6.3, so positive serial correlation. Um, again, in the companion video, I go through you know specifics of when we accept or reject that. Okay, so I'm just gonna pause here. So <clears throat> that's how we utilize Durbin-Watson statistic. Um, in the second one here, I'm going to do a Lagrange multiplier test. And so you see I've run the regression, and then I'm going to the view button in eViews. I'm going to go to residual diagnostics. And I'm going to go serial correlation LM test, which is short for Lagrange multiplier. And I'm doing this for a seconder. So the Durbin Watson would be first order auto regression test, right? Uh, LM would be for, for more. Okay, so serial correlation to LM tests, right? I'm gonna, it's gonna have how many number of legs, right? And that's kind of up to you. I've done it for, I've done two, right? Because this is kind of a small data set. Um, and then it produces, I'm gonna move myself back over here before I start this back up. Uh, and we get our results here, right? And so this is the test using a chi-squared table. And we can see that in this case, we, we, we do not uh, have any serial correlation at two legs. Okay, um, and that's all there is to it. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. I uh, hope you found this video useful, and uh, we'll see you again next time. Take care, everybody. Bye.